day of a year in miracles. Today we are on a Course in Miracles workbook lesson number 186. I'm going to dive right into this lesson today. Salvation of the world depends on me. Here is the statement that will one day take all arrogance away from every mind. Here is the thought of true humility, which holds no function as your own, but that which has been given you. It offers your acceptance of a part assigned to you without insisting on another role. It does not judge your proper role. It but, it but acknowledges the will of God is done on earth as well as heaven. It unites all wills on earth in heaven's plan to save the world, restoring it to heaven's peace. Let us not fight our function. We did not establish it. It is not our idea. The means are given us by which it will be perfectly accomplished. All that we are asked to do is to accept our part in genuine humility and not deny with self-deceiving arrogance that we are worthy. What is given us to do, we have the strength to do. Our minds are suited perfectly to take the part assigned to us by one who knows us well. Today's idea may seem quite sobering until you see its meaning. All it says is that your father still remembers you and offers you the perfect trust he holds in you who are his son. It does not ask that you be different in any way from what you are. Could humility rest request but this? And what could arrogance deny but this? Today, we will not shrink from our assignment on the specious grounds that modesty is outraged. It is pride that would deny the call for God himself. All false humility we lay aside today, that we may listen to God's voice, reveal to us what he would have us do. We do not doubt our adequacy for the function he will offer us. We will be certain only that he knows our strengths, our wisdom, and our holiness. And if he deems us worthy, so we are. But it is arrogance that judges otherwise. There is one way, and only one, to be released from the imprisonment your plan to prove the false is true has brought to you. Accept the plan you did not make instead. Judge not your value to it. If God's voice assures you that salvation needs your part and that the whole depends on you, be sure that it is so. The arrogant must cling to words, afraid to go beyond them, to experience which might affront their stance. Yet are the humble free to hear the voice which tells them what they are and what to do? Arrogance makes an image of yourself that is not real. It is this image which quails and retreats in terror as the voice of God assures you that you have the strength, the wisdom, and the holiness to go beyond all images. You are not weak, as is the image of yourself. You are not arrogant or ignorant or helpless. Sin cannot tarnish the truth in you, and misery can come not near the holy home of God. All this, the voice for God, relates to you. And as he speaks, the image trembles and seeks to attack the threat it does not know. Sensing its basis crumble, let it go. Salvation of the world depends on you, and not upon this little pile of dust. What can it tell the Holy Son of God? Why need he be concerned with it at all? And so we find our peace. We will accept the function God has given us for all illusions rest upon the weird belief that we can make another for ourselves. Our self-made roles are shifting. They seem to change from mourner to ecstatic bliss of love and loving. We can laugh or weep and greet the day with welcome or with tears. Our very being seems to change as we experience a thousand shifts in mood and our emotions 
raise us up high indeed or dash us to the ground in hopelessness. Is this the son of God? Could he create such instability and call it son? He who is changeless shares his attributes with his creation. All the images his son appears to have made have no effect on what he is. They blow across his mind like windswept leaves that form a patterning an instant and break apart to group again and scamper off. Or like mirages seen above a desert rising from the dust. These unsubstantial images will go and leave your mind unclouded and serene when you accept the function given you. The images you make give rise to but conflicting goals, impermanent and vague, uncertain and ambiguous. Who could be constant in his efforts or direct his energies and concentrated drive toward goals like these? The functions which the world esteems are so uncertain that they change 10 times an hour at their most secure. What hope of gain can rest on goals like this? In lovely contrast, certain as the sun's return each morning to dispel the night, your truly given function stands out clear and wholly unambiguous. There is no doubt of its validity. It comes from one who knows no error and his voice is certain of its message. They will not change nor be in conflict. All of them point to one goal and one you can attain. Your plan may be impossible, but God's can never fail because he is its source. Do as God's voice directs. And if it asks a thing of you, which seems impossible, remember who it is asks and who would make the denial. Then consider this, which is more likely to be right? The voice that speaks for the creator of all things, who knows all things exactly as they are, or a distorted image of yourself, confused, bewildered, inconsistent, and unsure of everything. Let not its voice direct you. Hear instead a certain voice, which tells you of a function given you by your creator, who remembers you and urges that you now remember him. His gentle voice is calling from the known to the unknowing. He would comfort you, although he knows no sorrow. He would make a restitution, though he is complete, a gift to you, although he knows that you have everything already. He has thoughts which answer every need his son perceives, although he sees them not. For love must give, and what is given in his name takes on the form most useful in a world of form. These are but the forms which never can deceive because they come from formlessness itself. Forgiveness is an earthly form of love, which, is, which as it is in heaven has no form. Yet what is needed here is given here as it is needed. In this form, you can fulfill your function even here. Although what love will mean to you when forgiveness has been restored to you and formlessness has been restored to you is greater still. Salvation of the world depends on you who can forgive, such is your function here. And that is it. That is our lesson for today. A lot of words, I know, but what it all comes down to is salvation of the world depends on you, on me, on all of us. And how do we do that? Through love. And how do we show love in this world of illusion through forgiveness. That's all. That's all. Again, it's talking about the grievances we're holding, right? We're holding grievances still against our brothers. And the way to fulfill our function of the salvation of the world is through forgiveness, right? Forgiveness of our brother. And that's showing them love, showing them that we are that truth of who we are always, and that has never changed, that we are love. And that's it. Great to see all of you here this morning. Hi, Mark, great to see you here. Hey, Pam, good to see you. Hi, honey, nice to see you on the live feed. 
Good morning, Carl. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Colette. I know, it's one of my favorites too, Barb. So good. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, all you beautiful souls. That's so nice, Colette. So it's great to see all of you here this morning on the live feed. Hey, Vera, nice to see you. Good morning, John. Hey, Penny, good to see you again this morning. Good morning, Dwayne. Open to what is accepting our function. That's right. And, you know, it's a lot of words that just really break down to forgiveness, right? Seeing our brothers as ourself and choosing love in every moment. And that's, that's how we do it. And, uh, you know... The more we try to concentrate on all of the things that are coming at us in this world from our jobs or our relationships, and we get you know, caught up in the drama and the chaos of it all, the more we lose sight of who we are and what our function is. And when we close our eyes and go inside and connect to source and then come out into the world to do whatever it is that we're doing every day, go to our job, deal with our you know, in-laws or our family or our friends with a heart filled with love, then we can share that with everyone and we can forgive, right? What we, what maybe appears to be a grievance because there really is no grievances. If you think about it, you know, if you can just offer love to everyone, all of the chaos and drama just goes away. It just goes away. And then you can create the life that you want of happiness, of love, of abundance, because that's how the law of attraction works in this world of things, right? Even though it is the world of illusions and we are still here operating in the world of illusions, we go forward with love and we create happiness, right? But we can't create happiness by looking for love outside of ourselves or looking for our happiness outside of ourselves because it's not there. That's not where it is. So I uh, hope you enjoy today's lesson. Good morning, Greg. Great to see you here on the live feed. And uh, I will be back again tomorrow with our next A Course in Miracles workbook lesson. But in the meantime, feel free to share what's coming up for you. If you've got questions about any of these lessons that we're doing, I know they can be a little bit confusing. The wording can be a little off sometimes. And uh, if you're not used to the wording or some of the way the A uh, Course in Miracles works, um, I'm happy to answer questions. I've been facilitating A Course in Miracles for over 25 years and uh, it's just the way that seems to work for me. And all paths lead to God. I'm not saying that this is the only path. This is the, the path that I have found that works the best for me. But all paths lead to love, to source, to that oneness that we all share. Because the truth is the truth, right? There's no denying that. All right, guys, well, have a great day, and I will see you here tomorrow for our next live A Course in Miracles workbook lesson. Until then, have a great day, and practice this lesson. You know, maybe try practicing forgiveness, because uh, your only function is salvation. The salvation of the world depends on you, and actually happiness is your only function. Um, so enjoy the day, and enjoy this lesson, A Course in Miracles workbook lesson 186, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye, guys.